A Derrick and Company Limited owned a French manufacturer of motor vehicles and aero engines in Ceresnes, near Paris. The French enterprise, known at first as A. Derrick et C., was founded in 1896 by Alexander Derrick after he sold his Gladiator bicycle business. In 1902, it took effect in 1903, he sold his new business to a privately held English company named A. Derrick & Company Limited, taking a substantial shareholding and a directorship himself. Alexander Derrick continued to run the business from Paris but was obliged to retire to the Côte d'Azur in 1913 following years of difficulties that brought Derrick & Co. into very hazardous financial circumstances. He had introduced an unproven unorthodox engine in 1911 which proved a complete failure yet he neglected CERN's popular conventional products. France then entered the First World War. He died in 1931 but long before that, in 1920, the name of A. Derrick & Co. 1905 was changed to STD Motors Limited. Then in 1922 Derrick's name was dropped from all products, the Ceresnes business was renamed Automobiles Talbot and the Ceresnes products were branded just Talbot. His Ceresnes business was to continue, still under British control, under the name Talbot until 1935 when it was acquired by investors led by the Ceresnes factory's managing director, Antonio Lago. STD Motors Limited, previously known until 1920 as A. Derrick and Company 1905, Limited became insolvent and was liquidated during 1935 and 1936. Topic history of the business Alexander Derrick, using part of the substantial profit he had made from selling his Gladiator bicycle factory to Adolp Clement, set up a plant in 1897 in the Paris suburb of Ceresnes. The company to own the business was formed in 1897 and named A. Derrick et C. Production began with a millet motorcycle powered by a five-cylinder rotary engine. It was supplemented shortly after by an electric brome. In 1898 Derrick et C. made a Léon Ballet designed Voiteret tricar. The Voiteret proved a debacle, the steering was problematic, the five-speed belt drive a masterpiece of bad design, and the hot tube ignition crude, proving the £10,000 Derrick et C. had paid for the design a mistake. Derrick et C. produced its first vehicle with an internal combustion engine in 1900. Designed by Ribarols, this was a 6.5 horsepower, 4.8 kilowatts, 6.6 PS voiture légère powered by a single cylinder engine of 785 cc, 47.9 cu in, and it featured shaft drive and three-speed column gear change. While not as successful as hoped, 100 were sold. In 1902 Derrick & Co. signed a contract with Adam Opel to jointly produce, under license, vehicles in the German Empire with the brand name Opel Derrick. Opel soon moved on to building their own vehicles. Topic London A. Derrick et C. was sold as of 30 September 1902 the sale was not completed until the following year, to an English company, A. Derrick & Company Limited. The attraction for the British venture capitalists was that French automobile technology and industry experience led the world. It was incorporated in England because French law made the necessary flotation processes more difficult than English law. The perception from across the Atlantic in USA was that French industry was offloading on British investors. The English financial group was headed by W. B. Avery of W. & T. Avery Limited, a Birmingham scales manufacturer, J. S. Smith Winby a London lawyer and a retired army officer, Colonel A. Rawlinson. They bought A. Derrick at sea and then sold it again to other investors for five times their purchase price. Derrick received slightly less than 50% of the shares in the new company. There was no public offering, eight other investors took up the rest of the shares, further capital was raised and large sums were spent on factory expansion. The Ceresnes site was expanded to some four acres in extent, and in England extensive premises were bought. The Derrick & Co. Automobile Company prospered, such that, by 1903, four models were offered, a 1.1-litre single, a 1.3L and 1.9L twin, and a 3.8L4. The 1904 models abandoned flitch-plated wood chassis for pressed steel, and the new Flying 15, powered by a 3-liter 4, had its chassis made from a single sheet of steel. This car was Alexander Derrick's chef d'oeuvre. 
there was nothing outstanding in its design but every part was in such perfect balance and harmony it became an outstanding model. Its exceptional quality helped the company capture a 10% share of the French auto market. In late 1904 the chairman reported sales were up by 20% though increased costs meant the profit had risen more slowly. But what was more important was they had many more orders than they could fill and the only solution was to enlarge the factory by as much as 50%. Almost 75% of 1904 output was exported. At the following annual meeting, 12 months later, the chairman was able to tell shareholders all the six speed records of the automobile world were held by Derek Cars and they had all been held more than 12 months, and yet another had recently been added by K. Lee Guinness. He also reported that during 1905 a large property had been bought in Lambeth for examining adjusting and stocking new cars ready for the peak sales period. An announcement followed two days later of a scheme of reconstitution of the company to raise more capital for further expansion. The reconstituted company was named A. Derrick & Company 1905 Limited. Paris resident Alexander Derrick remained managing director, Rawlinson was appointed managing director of the London branch. The reconstitution was to circumvent some holders of the company's shares who were unwilling to share the prosperity and blocked proposed new issues. So the company was technically sold, they were paid out and obliged to buy new shares like anyone else. J. S. Smith Winby continued as chairman. After this reconstitution over 80% of the shares were held in England, meanwhile there was a move towards building bigger cars and by 1907 there was one model with an 11.5 litre engine. Alexander Derrick had long been interested in heavy vehicles for the carriage of people and the transport of goods. On his advice the company entered into a joint venture with Léon Serpullet in 1905 to build steam-powered buses. A new factory was built at Ceresnys capable of making 100 chassis each month but the buses were not successful and in 1910 the directors had to tell their shareholders they had written off £156,000 of their investment in heavy steam vehicles. Topic M. Alexander Derrick retires in April 1908. The directors found it necessary to formally deny rumors of M. Derrick's intention to resign, noting his contract did not expire until September 1910. Returning to an 1898 idea by Alexander Derrick to build low cost, good quality cars, much as Henry Ford was doing with the Model T, Derrick and Co. introduced a 260 pounds 14 to 16 horsepower 10 to 12 kilowatts, 14 to 16 PS model at the very end of 1911. These, at the founder's insistence, would all be cursed with the Henriad rotary valve engine, which was underpowered and prone to seizing. The new engine's failure was reported by Derrick and Co. to its shareholders to be no more than the difficulty of achieving quantity production. It proved disastrous to the mark, and eventually Alexander Derrick retired. Topic Owen Clegg In late 1911 Alexander Derrick was replaced by new managing director, chief engineer Paul Ribarols, one-time head of Derrick's Gladiator and, unlike Derrick, a motor racing enthusiast. In June 1912 Derrick, surrounded by new blood, resigned, he had already successfully speculated on then sold all his shares. A main board director, Hopkins, was sent to Paris to take charge of general administration and Owen Clegg was sent to Ceresnys from Rover in Coventry and appointed works manager. At the end of 1912 the chairman reassured shareholders a return on their investment in the valveless motor would arrive in 1913. By February 1913 shareholders had set up their own inquiry into the unsatisfactory position of their business and it reported poor cooperation between London and Ceresnys, they had been pulling against each other, furthermore there had been considerable loss through recent changes in personnel. The committee then went on record saying, M. Derek, as a typical Frenchman, probably possessed far more originality and initiative than any Englishman of corresponding situation, but, if he displayed a failing, it was that he, like most of his brilliant race, lacked the Englishman's pertinacity, and, after a time, seemed to lose interest, as it were, in his original conceptions without making any serious effort to strike out a fresh line. The chairman of the investigating committee, Norman Craig, was appointed chairman of A. Derek and Company, 1905, New Works Manager Owen Clegg, designer of the proven Rover 12, sensibly copied the 12 for Derrick & Co.'s new model. The factory at Ceresnys was retooled for mass production, making it one of the first in the industry to do so. 
The 1.6 HP Clegg Derrick was joined by an equally reliable 2.1-liter 1.2 HP car, and soon the factory was turning out 60 cars a week. By 1914, 12,000 men rolled out 14 cars a day. Topic automobiles Derrick S.A. For the First World War, the Derrick & Co. factory was switched to the production of various war materials. During 1916 aside from the land and buildings all the Ceresny's assets were transferred to Société Anonyme Automobiles Derrick, a new company incorporated in France for the purpose. British assets were transferred to a British company named Derrick Motor Engineering Company Limited. A Derrick & Company 1905 Limited was now no more than a holder of shares in these two businesses. Ceresny's land and buildings were transferred to Derrick Proprietary Company Limited of London and leased back to Saw Derrick. Topic A conglomerate After the armistice of of November 1918 A Derrick & Company 1905 Limited bought Heenan and Frode, constructional engineers, of Worcester and Manchester then at the end of 1919 Derrick & Co. bought Clement Talbot Limited and early in 1920 Jonas Woodhead and Sons of Leeds, suppliers of springs for cars. Then later in June 1920 they bought control of Sunbeam Motor Car Company Limited and in August W&G Du Cross Limited of Acton, taxi operators and van, lorry, bus and ambulance body builders. <laughs> STD Motors In August 1920 A. Derrick and Company 1905 was renamed STD Motors Limited to recognize the gathering together of Sunbeam Talbot and Derrick under one ownership. The Sunbeam car would continue to be made at Moorfield Works, Wolverhampton, the Talbot at Clement Talbot in North Kensington and the Derrick car at Ceresny's. There would now be central buying selling administration and advertising departments all with STD in Britain all businesses retained their separate identities. Talbot Derrick Following the inclusion of Clement Talbot in the STD group Ceresny's products were branded Talbot Derrick but the word Derrick was dropped in 1922. Cars made by automobiles Talbot imported from France to England were renamed Derrick. For the first two years they were badged Talbot Derrick. To avoid confusion with the English Clement Talbot products, they were imported and sold in England by Derrick Motor Engineering Company Limited. Topic STD Motors Limited Group in 1924 Clement Talbot Limited of North Kensington, London W10, Talbot Cars Derrick Motor Engineering Company Limited of Fulham London SW7, Motorcar Bodies Sunbeam Motor Car Company Limited of Moorfield, Wolverhampton, Sunbeam Cars Jonas Woodhead and Sons Limited of Osset, Leeds, Automobile Springs in France Automobiles Talbot Saw of Ceresny's, Paris, Talbot Cars Derrick Proprietary Company Limited of North Kensington, London W10, held those French assets not held by Talbot saw other investments W and G Du Cross Limited of Warple Way Acton, London W3, W and G Commercial Vehicles, Yellow Taxi Cabs, Charabanc and Bus Bodies, Motorcar Bodies and Assembly of French Sourced Talbot Components for Sale in the British Market as Derek Talbot Cars. Heenan and Frode Limited of Worcester, Constructional Engineers In early 1924 STD Motors went to the public to borrow funds amounting to around 15% of its fully paid capital. No purpose for the borrowing was published but it is believed to have been to fund Cotalan's ambitions for the group's racing cars. Increased profits did not materialize and within five years the group's financial reserves were exhausted and plant and machinery was becoming obsolete and the group's products were becoming outmoded. After certain undertakings were made to their bankers the company's preference shareholders received their 1925-1926 dividend, in 1929. The financial problems of the 1920s were thought to have been ended by a court-sanctioned financial reconstruction in June 1930. At that time the substantial accumulated losses were recognized and the ordinary capital chopped down to one-third of its value. Financial commentators could see that the only assets were shares in or loans to other companies making evaluation difficult. Price Waterhouse & Co. was commissioned to report to the board on the financial situation but the board only released a brief summary of Price Waterhouse's recommendations. 
The report's main criticism was the failure of the board to coordinate the members of the group. Much greater centralization was recommended as well as standardization. In late March 1931, the suggestion was made by a specially called committee of shareholders that some new blood should be introduced to the board of directors. In response, the entire STD Motors board of directors resigned. An entirely new board was appointed under the chairmanship of General Sir Travers Clark. The new board immediately set to work to prepare to implement most of the Price Waterhouse recommendations. Its members were, Messrs. Clark, Chair, Marion, Newcomb, Nayland and Lord Queenborough. This board remained in place until the end of the business. At the end of 1931 the chairman reported a small loss for STD Motors but having, for the first time, synchronized reporting for the nine trading subsidiaries no one was quite clear about the year's real profits or losses of the group but they did at least now have a proper grip of the extent of the group's assets and liabilities. Eighteen months later another capital reduction, scheme of arrangement was announced. The 1924 borrowings fell due for repayment in early 1934. The board was unable to find a way to repay them or replace them with a new loan. The situation was without hope and negotiations began for a sale of the constituent businesses for cash to repay loans. They were not successful. STD again asked their lenders for more time to find cash to pay interest. Topic. Disintegration Two days later, just before the opening of the October 1934 motor show at Olympia, Crisp and another, trustees of the Lenders Trust deed applied to the High Court, Chancery Division, for the appointment of receivers to Sunbeam and Clement Talbot. In the end profit-making Clement Talbot was saved the ignominy of receivership and STD was able to sell it as and when the directors chose. William Lyons was finishing his SS100 sports car and let it be known that he believed he had a binding agreement with STD Motors to purchase Sunbeam's name and trademarks thus upgrading his very moderately priced new car. In January, unbeknownst to Lyons, a provisional agreement was made with Roots Securities, and from that time the Roots brothers controlled Clement Talbot and Derrick Motor Engineering Company though Roots would have to wait for the end of the legal proceedings to collect Sunbeam from its receivership. Roots Securities announced in the summer of 1935 they had at last bought Sunbeam and its subsidiary Sunbeam Commercial Vehicles from the receiver. The former Talbot business in France had long been committed under an option to the manager of the Ceresnes plant, Antonio Lago, while its STD commitments were clarified completed with the sale of Sunbeam and once that was fixed saw Talbot's commitments to its French bankers were cleared after lengthy negotiation. Meanwhile other group members were sold and STD Motors was finally liquidated in 1936. 